A brand new Airbus A220, just five years old, lies in pieces at a Canadian airport. Engines gone, wings stripped, body torn apart for spare parts. This aircraft cost $90 million when it was delivered to Egypt Air. Now it's scrap metal. This shouldn't happen. Planes are built to fly for decades, not die before their fifth birthday. So what went so wrong that an entire fleet of these advanced jets had to be scrapped? Today, we're diving into one of aviation's most shocking failures. The story of how cutting-edge technology became aviation's most expensive disaster. The promise of the A220 The Airbus A220 wasn't just any aircraft, it was supposed to be the future of regional aviation. Born from Bombardier's ambitious CS-100 and CS-300 program, this aircraft promised to revolutionize short to medium haul flights with unprecedented fuel efficiency and passenger comfort. When Airbus acquired the program in 2018 and rebranded it as the A220, the aviation world took notice. Here was an aircraft that could carry between 100 to 150 passengers while burning 20% less fuel than comparable jets. The secret, state-of-the-art Pratt & Whitney PW1500G geared turbofan engines. Revolutionary technology powering the new generation of more efficient aircraft. Airlines couldn't place orders fast enough. Delta Airlines committed to 95 aircraft, JetBlue ordered 60. Swiss International added them to replace aging regional jets. The A220 wasn't just selling well, it was being hailed as a game-changer that would make regional routes profitable again, while offering passengers the comfort of a wide-body experience in a narrow-body aircraft. But perhaps no airline was more enthusiastic about the A220 than Egypt Air. Egyptair's Ambitious Gamble In 2017, Egyptair made what seemed like a brilliant strategic decision. The Egyptian flag carrier signed a contract for 12 Airbus A22300s, valued at over $1 billion at list prices. These weren't just any aircraft purchases, they were the cornerstone of Egyptair's fleet modernization strategy. The airline planned to use these fuel-efficient jets to expand their regional network across Africa and the Middle East, connecting Cairo to destinations that had previously been uneconomical to serve. The A220's exceptional range and efficiency would allow Egypt Air to open new routes while significantly reducing operating costs on existing ones. The first aircraft, registered SUGFA, arrived in Cairo in September 2019 with great fanfare. Egypt Air executives praised the aircraft's advanced technology, spacious cabin and revolutionary fuel efficiency. Passengers loved the larger windows, quieter operation and premium feel that rivaled much larger aircraft. Everything seemed perfect. The A220S entered service on routes to destinations across Africa and Europe, and initial passenger feedback was overwhelmingly positive. Egypt Air's pilots appreciated the modern avionics and smooth handling characteristics. The maintenance teams were impressed by the aircraft's advanced diagnostic systems. But what happened next shocked the entire aviation industry. The first signs of trouble Within months of entering service, Egypt Air's A220 fleet began experiencing problems that no one had anticipated. It started subtly, slightly longer than expected maintenance intervals, minor engine anomalies that required additional inspection time. At first, these seemed like typical teething problems for a new aircraft type. But then the issues escalated dramatically. The 140-seat aircraft were delivered between 2019 and 2022, but had a short career being taken out of service shortly thereafter amid problems with the Pratt and Whitney GTF engines. What was supposed to be Egypt Air's most reliable and efficient fleet was rapidly becoming their biggest operational nightmare. 
The problems centered around the Pratt & Whitney PW1500G engines, the very technology that had made the A220 so attractive. The PW1524G-3 engines made by Pratt & Whitney for a 220-300 planes are supposed to be removed for maintenance after 5,260 landings. But due to engine design defects, they are removed before even 1,000 landings. This wasn't just an inconvenience, it was a catastrophe. Imagine buying a car that's supposed to run for 100,000 miles, but breaks down every 15,000. That's essentially what happened to Egypt Air's A220 fleet. The Unfolding Disaster As 2020 progressed, the situation deteriorated rapidly. Egypt Air's A-225s were spending more time in maintenance hangars than in the sky. The airline's operational planners found themselves constantly juggling flight schedules as aircraft were pulled out of service for unscheduled engine work. The financial implications were staggering. Each A220 that Egypt Air had purchased cost approximately $90 million. When you factor in training costs, spare parts, inventory, and route planning, the total investment per aircraft approached $100 million. Now, these expensive assets were generating virtually no revenue while continuing to accumulate massive maintenance costs, but the engine problems weren't unique to Egypt Air. Operators including Air Tanzania, Air Baltic, and Swiss reported engines requiring attention after far fewer cycles than expected. The problem was industry-wide, but it hit some operators harder than others. Egypt Air faced a perfect storm of challenges. The airline operates in Egypt's harsh desert climate, where sand and extreme temperatures can exacerbate mechanical issues. The carrier also found that the A220 was unreliable in Egypt's dry climate. Combined with the inherent engine problems and the COVID-19 pandemic beginning in early 2020, this created an operational nightmare. The Breaking Point By 2021, Egypt Air had reached its breaking point. The airline had 12 of the twin jets in its fleet, the first of which it received in September 2019. But the persistent engine problems had made the fleet economically unviable. The numbers told a devastating story. While Egypt Air's A220S should have been flying hundreds of hours per month, generating millions in revenue, they were instead accumulating hangar time and maintenance bills. The airline's accountants calculated that continuing to operate the troubled fleet would result in even greater losses than selling them at a massive discount. This wasn't supposed to happen. Modern aircraft are designed to operate reliably for 25 to 30 years. The A220's predecessor, the Bombardier CRJ series, had established an excellent reputation for reliability. Airlines worldwide were banking on the A220 to provide similar dependability with dramatically improved efficiency. Instead, Egypt Air found itself trapped with a fleet of expensive, unreliable aircraft that were destroying the airline's operations operational efficiency and financial performance. The airline's executives faced an agonizing decision. Continue hemorrhaging money while waiting for Pratt & Whitney to solve the engine problems or cut their losses and exit the A220 program entirely. In early 2024, Egypt Air made the shocking announcement that would reverberate throughout the aviation industry. The Shocking Decision The Egyptian airline preferred not to wait for a solution and resold them to the lessor Azora. In what must rank as one of the most expensive fleet decisions in aviation history, Egypt Air sold its entire A220 fleet to aircraft lessor Azora at a massive loss. The financial devastation was unprecedented. Industry sources suggest that Egypt Air recovered only a fraction of their original investment. When you consider the purchase price, training costs, spare parts, and operational expenses, the airline's losses likely exceeded $500 million. 
enough to purchase an entire fleet of older, proven aircraft. But the story doesn't end there. What happened next would shock even seasoned aviation industry observers. Rather than attempting to find new operators for these young aircraft, Azora made a decision that sent shockwaves throughout the industry. Five of the six Egyptair A225s it acquired will never fly again. Instead, they'll feed the parts pipeline to keep other operators in the air. Think about that for a moment. Aircraft that had barely begun their operational lives, some less than three years old, were being sentenced to death not because they were worn out or obsolete, but because they had become more valuable as spare parts than as flying machines. The Dismantling of Su GFA In April 2025, the inevitable happened. Azora began dismantling SUGFA, the same aircraft that had arrived in Cairo with such promise just five years earlier was now being systematically torn apart at Mirabel Airport in Canada. The images that emerged on social media were haunting. Su GFA, its Egypt Air livery still visible, sat with its engines removed and panels stripped away. Workers methodically extracted valuable components engines, avionics, landing gear, and other systems that would be refurbished and installed on other A220s around the world. This wasn't just the death of an aircraft, it was the physical manifestation of one of aviation's most expensive failures. The engines and components are headed primarily to Delta Airlines, which faces its own pressure to keep their A220 fleet operational amid ongoing supply chain challenges. The irony is palpable. Delta, one of the A220's biggest supporters, now depends on the carcasses of failed aircraft to keep their own fleet flying. The dismantling process revealed the true extent of the supply chain crisis plaguing the A220 program. The decision to scrap the six-year-old A220 comes amid ongoing supply chain challenges for the aviation industry and airline disruptions caused by the A220's troubled Pratt & Whitney engine type. The Industry Impact The scrapping of such young aircraft sent shockwaves throughout the aviation industry. Airlines that had invested billions in A220S watched nervously as their expensive assets were reduced to spare parts. The message was clear. Even the most advanced, fuel-efficient aircraft in the world could become worthless if fundamental reliability problems weren't addressed. Pratt & Whitney found itself under intense scrutiny. The company had positioned its geared turbofan technology as revolutionary, promising unprecedented fuel efficiency and reduced maintenance costs. Instead, airlines were discovering that the engines required far more maintenance than traditional designs, often negating the fuel savings through increased downtime and repair costs. Other A220 operators began reassessing their operations. Some airlines increased their spare engine inventory to cope with unexpected removals. Others negotiated compensation agreements with Pratt & Whitney to cover additional maintenance costs. A few began quietly exploring options to exit the program entirely. The reputational damage extended beyond Pratt & Whitney to Airbus itself. The European manufacturer had acquired the A220 program partly to compete with Boeing's 737 MAX in the smaller, narrow body market. Now, instead of celebrating the aircraft's technological advancement, Airbus found itself defending the program's viability as images of scrapped aircraft circulated online. The Human Cost Behind the financial numbers and technical failures lies a human story that's equally devastating. Egypt Air's pilots who had trained on the A220 found their expensive type ratings suddenly worthless. Maintenance technicians who had specialized in the new aircraft saw their careers disrupted as the fleet disappeared. The airline's route network, carefully planned around the A220's capabilities, had to be restructured using less efficient aircraft. Passengers who had enjoyed the A220's superior comfort were relegated to older, noisier jets. 
the ripple effects extended far beyond the airline's balance sheet. For the aviation industry as a whole, the A220 debacle represented a sobering reminder that technological advancement doesn't always translate to operational success. The aircraft's revolutionary design and exceptional efficiency meant nothing if it couldn't reliably complete its missions. The psychological impact on the industry was equally significant. Airlines that had been early adopters of new technology began adopting more conservative approaches to fleet planning. The phrase proven reliability regained prominence in aircraft evaluation criteria, sometimes trumping efficiency and environmental benefits. This shift in mindset would influence aircraft acquisition decisions for years to come. The ongoing struggle Today, as the pieces of SUGFA are shipped to Delta Airlines and other operators, the A220 program continues to struggle with its identity crisis. The aircraft remains technologically impressive and popular with passengers, but persistent reliability issues have tarnished its reputation and limited its commercial success. Pratt & Whitney has invested billions in addressing the engine problems, developing new maintenance procedures and component designs. Some operators report improved reliability with the latest engine variants and maintenance protocols. However, the damage to confidence has been severe and lasting. Airlines considering A220 orders now face a complex calculation. The aircraft's efficiency and passenger appeal remain compelling, but the risk of operational disruptions and unexpected costs cannot be ignored. Many carriers have delayed delivery decisions or reduced order quantities while waiting for definitive proof that the problems have been resolved. The supply chain challenges persist as well. Ongoing supply chain challenges for the aviation industry and airline disruptions caused by the A220's troubled Pratt and Whitney engine type continue to affect operators worldwide. The irony that new aircraft must be scrapped to provide parts for other new aircraft highlights the severity of the situation. Airbus faces pressure to demonstrate the A220's long-term viability while customer confidence remains fragile. And that's the shocking end of SUGFA, a $90 million aircraft scrapped at just five years old. Egypt Air's dream became aviation's nightmare. The A220 story shows us that newer isn't always better in aviation. Sometimes cutting-edge technology cuts too deep. What's your take on this disaster? Should airlines stick with proven aircraft or take risks on new tech? Let us know in the comments. If you found this story as shocking as we did, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more incredible aviation stories. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.